Hi everybody, it's Nikki and I am here to do a quick video that is personal experience, no medical advice whatsoever, and it's just an attempt at a second demonstration tonight. Um, I did one demonstration where I was inputting a new transmitter ID into um, my T-Slim trying to get it back on. Everything went very well. It, it all went exactly as it should and then I learned that I had to actually change, change the transmitter um, because of the fact that that was a transmitter I was wearing as part of a study. So I need to go ahead and replace it with my own. So I figured since I'm doing this as well tonight, I would try to um, capture on video and see if I can do it again. But um, okay, so basically what I have is I do have a sensor already in. There's only two days on it. I'm hoping to be able to pick that back up so I don't have to change my sensor. Um, but I'm gonna put in a new transmitter ID into both my T-Slim and my phone. Um, and then hopefully jump right back in control like you. Um, okay, so in general, when I am changing a transmitter, and as I said, typically I'd be I'd be starting a new sensor, but in this case, I'm just gonna just hopefully start this new sensor as new. We'll see. Um, it might not work, okay, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with putting my transmitter ID in my pump. Um, typically when I'm doing this, I want to I want to enter the transmitter ID in two places. Uh, I'm going to enter it into my pump. I'm going to enter it into my phone in the settings in the Dexcom app. Um, doing just one of those two things I think is probably a lot of the problems people run into. And it's because you can actually get the reading on one side but not the other. Or you can you can see it on your phone but you can't connect to control IQ or something like that. Um, so it's so kind of first line of troubleshooting is to make sure your transmitter ID is correct in both the pump and the phone. Um, so I will go ahead and put in my, a new transmitter ID. So I'm going to go to options. Uh, I'm going to go down to my CGM. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is the top one. I'm going to go down to where the transmitter ID is. I'm going to touch transmitter ID and I'm going to go ahead and enter the new one. And as I said in the last video, when you get to the letters, you have to touch that letter that button that many times to get to the letter. So for instance, if my first, um, I'll get there in a second. Okay, so I'll start with eight because that's what my transmitter ID starts with and then I'll show you. Okay, eight, I'm gonna go to the, the letter buttons and I have to push this button twice to get to the H because it's not the first one. So I do G, G and that's how I get to the H. Um, eight H. I don't know if I can tell you guys what my, oh, I can tell you, but then I have to kill you. <laughs> okay, and it's going to ask me to verify it, so I'm going to enter it again, and I'll tell you the first two letters, 8H. <laughs> um, I'm all laughing now, and I'm going to cry when it turns out that it blocks me because it's going to say I've already used the sensor. Okay, I verified it. Setting saved. Um, this is asking me to start sensor. I'm going to say yes. If you have a sensor code, put it in. I know mine by heart. <laughs> so that's, okay. I entered it. You ready to start it? Okay. It's playing nice. It's showing me the warm-up screen. I don't know if it will stick or not. My guess is in, within a couple minutes, it'll tell me I already used that sensor. And that is because you can restart these. Um, you can restart, but I didn't plan ahead and I didn't leave the transmitter off possibly for the 30 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. So um, I'll just go through the motions anyway and keep my fingers crossed. Um, over on the Dexcom app, as I said, there's two places. If you go over to the Dexcom app and you go, there's my home, that's, that's it telling me I've lost everything. So I'm going to go down to settings, which is at the bottom, and you still can't see it. I'm going to go to transmitter, which is about halfway down that page, um, and my serial number, SN. Oh no, just kidding, pair new. To pair a new transmitter, first stop your current sensor session. Once it is stopped, okay. So, I thought I did stop that. Okay, and I'm going to put in the same. I hear my children behind me sneaking around trying to get stuff. I'm going to put in my ID again. 
save, confirm. I'm going to put in my sensor code. Save, confirm. Next, connecting with transmitter. Um, so that's fine. So this is what I want, and this is all I have time to show in the video um, because this can take up to, well, this, this is not saying it, but typically it says that it can take up to 20 minutes or whatever it is to do that. Um, so this is what I did for the last video, and then I signed off, and everything synced up and was good. So I'm hoping that this means that I'll have the same result this time. The only thing I am unsure of is whether or not reusing this sensor you know what I didn't do? <laughs> I didn't put my, my transmitter in. We'll see if that connects. <laughs> um, and I've done that too, where I put it in late after I was asked to start the sensor and it seems to be okay. But um, lots of little things to go back and check, including just um, maybe restarting it in a much cleaner process. But I really just wanted to show how to put the transmitter IDs in and kind of where you needed to do that. Um, so... I'll sign off now before everything starts to beep, <laughs> letting me know that I got nothing. <laughs> so, thank you for watching and have a good night. Bye.